Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are so excited to have Barry Carl here joining us once again, live on the podcast, also live on Zoom. He's a man who wears many hats, yes, has two separate uh, practices, one for core energetics, uh, somatic sex education is the other. And I would love for Barry to say hello and introduce himself to us today. How are you? I'm good. And as you said, hello. It's nice to see you all. Well, it's nice to see you, Jill. I can't see anybody else, but that's kind of how it goes. Right? I know. <laughs> I know you're out there. I know you're out there. Yay! <laughs> Thank you for being here. And uh, just to point out, uh, to start, Barry, I want you to introduce a little bit about what you do. And also, uh, again, Barry Carl is the name. You can look him up on heal.me, correct? Uh, go yes. to Heal Me and you search his name. You'll find him there. So go ahead. Tell us exactly what you do specifically, please. Well, um, as you mentioned, I have two separate practices. Uh, one practice is as a somatic therapist. Somatic comes from the Greek word soma, which means body, which means I work with the body as well as the mind, emotion, spirit. Mm -hmm. um, my other practice is as a somatic sex educator, which means once again, that I work with the body. We do more than talk. There is touch involved. Um, it is um, curated work that is for the sole purpose of my clients' knowledge, self-knowledge, pleasure expansion, trauma reduction, um, and growth, personal growth. Beautiful. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here with all your experience. I know you're based out of New York City, but you're working with people all over, right? Uh, actually, this... actually, I live about 20 miles north of the city. Okay. I don't, I don't have a practice in Manhattan anymore. I closed my Manhattan practice in 2018. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm, a I'm a little ways north of the city. It's easy to get here from the city. Uh, but but just, just to be accurate, I'm not, I don't practice in, in Manhattan anymore. Okay, I'm sorry. You know, it's just said New York City, New York still. So, yeah, but yeah. you're here and you're available via this type of talking, Zoom, telephone, uh, telehealth in a sense, can we call it? Yes. Yeah, Perfect. I mean, um, I see people, uh, I see people in person as mm -hmm. well. You know, I, I do ask that, that uh, the people who want to see me in person are vaxxed. Um, I, I can't help it if, if you know, if, uh, you folks out there, if you like that or you don't, that's just how I work. It's for safety. Um, but I do telehealth as well. Um, it's my preference, actually, to see people in person. Um, the one thing that gets through the screen is energy. But I think we're all tired of screens. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's really not the best. It's not it's not what we were wired for. We're wired for contact. We're wired to be able to see and hear and feel and touch and smell each other. Uh, all the stuff that we've taken for granted uh, up until 2020. You know, getting together was something that we just did, and and I think that. A lot of people have suffered greatly uh, over COVID from uh, both from isolation and from a lack of touch. Yeah. Um, so whenever possible, whenever possible, I, I, I ask people to come to me. Mm -hmm. because that's that's really where the juice is yeah the juice i like it well why yeah. are you doing this tell us a little bit about uh, you know why we're going to talk about barriers to pleasure antidotes today and a lot more so where did you want to begin well i, I do want to begin with why i'm doing this mm -hmm. um because i i i don't um i i don't really want a flood of clients um I, I have a limited amount of space in my practice for new clients. I'm happy to see people. But my main purpose in doing these podcasts is to educate, yep. to spread the word. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this work isn't new. You know, it's got, it's got roots going back about 2,500 years. Wow. Uh, so yeah. 
it, it's not new, but not a whole lot of people know about it. And it, it's such a, a, a direct and specific yeah. and, and um, effective mm-hmm. tool uh, that I, I, I want more people to know about it. I want more people to be able to have it as a resource in their lives because mm-hmm. it makes life better. Absolutely. I agree. Well, thank you for being here and for joining us. And by the way, um, besides searching for you, do you want to share a phone number as well or any other form of contact before we continue? I will do that. Yes. Right. Uh, my, my phone number is 917-863-1950. Once again, that's 917-863-1950. Okay. But wait, there's more. It's a cell phone. You can get a hold of me anytime, any place, almost. Oh, just don't call <laughs> in the middle of the night. I mean, unless it's an emergency. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, please don't. <laughs> love it. Gotta love Barry's voice. There's something so calming and genuine about it. And yeah, he's not. He's he he needs his own show, but he's got this like Barry White voice, uh, the Barry Cole Well, actually, voice. actually, Jill, I'm. White berry. Ah. Ah. See what I did there? Yes, I love it. <laughs> awesome. 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 So we're so glad you're here helping people do this. Um, and a lot of people are also um, scared of pleasure in a sense, not feeling they're deserving of it, not feeling that they should have it or maybe being embarrassed about it, right? Pleasure comes in all different ways. We're not just talking sex, but sex, of course, is clearly one of them. Um, pleasure in general. Would you mind elaborating on that and all about the barriers to pleasure that a lot of us face? Why, no, Jill. It's funny you should ask me that. And of course I wouldn't mind. Um, I think I think we talked about this a little bit in the first mm-hmm. podcast, how, how um, as a society... Uh, we've commercialized pleasure. We sell things with pleasure. Uh, it, 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 we make things look like they're pleasurable. Um, well, and uh, the thoughts that, that, that come to my mind initially are like how we sell fast food or how we sell cars. I mean, uh, Ronald McDonald, perfect example. Big clown, right? What does he have to do with food? Nothing. Yeah. It's like, I'm happy. Come mm-hmm. be with me. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a kind of a hollow promise, a, a lot of the things that we attach pleasure to. Uh, and I think one of the great disappointments in life for a lot of people um, is to strive and achieve and then to have all the things that are supposed to come along with success and happiness uh, we 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 bust our butts every day to to make money so we can have things that are supposed to make us happy yeah but the 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 big elephant in the room there is that things only make us happy for a short period of time true there's yeah. there's the initial rush of ah! the high the high yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I got it I got yeah. it you know a, a new car is new until it's off the lot you know yeah. until yeah. it gets it first scratch mm-hmm. um, so our our satisfaction in acquisition is very short lived and it's very shallow but. Those are pr- primarily what I would call the, the sources of pleasure that culture has given us permission to enjoy. Mm-hmm. There are vast areas of pleasure that um, are harder to access, mm-hmm. um, partly because we as a culture have inculcated suspicion and wariness into and, yeah. pleasure we we're not really sure as a culture if pleasure is really good or not you know we 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 come from a very stern bootstrappy kind of ethic uh in which you know we have to kind of 
zip ourselves up and jam ourselves down and and put the shoulder to the grindstone and do the work. Have you? I, I had a. I'm sorry, I'm kind of stuttering here because, like, okay. you know, all these thoughts kind of make a bottleneck in my head and they're all trying to get out the door at once and so sometimes i go da 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 but uh-huh. uh, it's only because my mind's going too fast yeah um mm-hmm. so um we we have uh suspicion and fear around pleasure uh, i had someone once tell me um uh, I I need to get done everything I need to get done. And I, I want to have pleasure at the same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like we have made Why? pleasure antithetical yeah. to work. Mm-hmm. If you're having too much fun at work, it... you're not doing it right. Mm-hmm. You know, it, work is serious. Mm-hmm. Um, now, my life has not been like that the i when i was about nine years old i i I was in the midst of a of a grown-up party and all of the all of the men were in one room complaining about their bosses and their jobs and their wives and all the wives were in another room complaining about their husbands yeah and this and this was their lives and i thought oh my god we don't know how much time we've got here and this lifetime is so incredibly precious. Why would anyone want to spend a majority of their time, time for the most productive years of their lives doing something that they don't love? Yeah. Why? 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 Because, <laughs> you know, people have been brought up to be good workers. You, you, you hear it, you know, in class all the time grow up and go get a job not yeah. you you can be the boss or life is for enjoying life is for living uh pleasure is expansive yeah. it's it's what we were made for to yeah. to live in the moment and mm-hmm. and and enjoy experience so we're we're discouraged from that i think partly because people who are happy and satisfied tend not to make great consumers. True. They buy less. Yeah. Because they have more. But it's all it's all inside. I have I have I call them the three dumb rules uh that I that I use in my work. And and they're very simple, Jill. One is like what you like. Mm-hmm. Number two is want what you want. And number three is have what you have. Yeah. Let yourself really have and enjoy what you have. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I started this off uh, with the idea of talking about what are the barriers to pleasure, specifically physical pleasure, which we are, in fact, made for. You know, we have our bodies are unique and that we have mm-hmm. receptors in our skin for very specific kinds of touch. We have receptors in our skin that are only uh, susceptible to slow touch. But how many of us take the time, time to, even to touch or be touched to... slowly? Yeah. Yeah. Rush, yeah. rush, rush, rush. Why we're rush, we're, rush, in, a, rush. we're yeah. in a big rush yeah all the time and, and and i'm not here to be you know the the old guy who says you know the pace you live at now it's it's crazy it's crazy you should just slow down and get off my lawn mm-hmm. yeah. uh, but there's something to that true there, there's something to uh allowing pleasure in all its many forms into our lives because it enriches our lives. It produces all these wonderful chemicals uh, yeah. that people are trying to um, replace with prescriptions mm-hmm. and things. Um, so one of the one of the biggest barriers to pleasure is hypervigilance. 
That's okay. So that's five syllables. That's a long word. What does it mean? Hypervigilance. I don't even know. Wait, yeah, I'm thinking okay. about it. I'm not really sure okay. either. I might well, have to Google that one. <laughs> okay. So, so there is a state that we find ourselves mm -hmm. in often, and I call it survival mode. It's the place from which we can only do one of three things, which is fight, flee, or freeze. Mm. And we're in this state more often than most of us realize. Yeah. Um, take uh, road rage, oh, for gosh. example. Uh, something that, that pops up, scares everybody. You, you, the person that, that just cut you off could... Uh, they could have a gun in their car. Yeah. Uh, we hear every day. I mean, or we see. All you have to do is, you know, pull up a TikTok. Mm -hmm. and, and it's almost a guarantee that somewhere in that little, you know, bunch of clips is going to be people duking it out over, you know, a, a traffic misunderstanding. Yeah. Um, uh. Our wiring as human beings hasn't really changed much in 300,000 years. Um, our ancestors needed uh, survival mode to survive. Yeah. Okay, I mean, that's... that's that sounds, that's, yeah, redundant, yeah, but duh. no, it's true. But, no, 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 I get but, it. It's but, true. you know, they were running away from a saber-toothed tiger. This was like, you know, immediate threat. Um, our wiring hasn't changed, so we get the same reaction from uh, a close yeah. call on the road that our ancestors got from nearly being eaten by an animal. Yeah. So our bodies have this emergency reaction capability that robs blood from the brain, which means that our ability to think is compromised and sends that blood to the muscles so we can either fight or run. We exist in this state to a greater or lesser degree more of the time than people realize. And when it comes to opening the body enough to experience pleasure, we have a lot of caution and wariness. And I call that state of caution and wariness yeah. hypervigilance. Got it. We're okay. overly vigilant. It's really hard to drop out of that and become, here's another buzzword, embodied. Uh -huh. We all have, we all have Body. bodies, yeah. but we don't but... all live in them. Mm -hmm. A lot of us walk around all, all in our heads. And, and everything south of the, of the chin is basically a mechanism for getting our head from one place to another. Yeah. You know, the, the body is a, it's a form of propulsion. We don't conceive of it as, and, yep. a, as something that's a, a vessel of pleasure. Mm -hmm. Both a, a, a receptor and a giver of pleasure. Um, we, it, one of the things that makes me sad mm -hmm. about life in general, yeah. uh, and, and I get the older I get, the sadder I get about this, Aww. I see so many people with so little pleasure in their lives. What we allow ourselves to... compared to what we are capable of experiencing mm -hmm. is just the merest fragment of what we're capable of. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I work with clients, uh, one of the things that we do is start to notice where pleasure lives, both in their, in their bodies, in their minds, in their lives. You know, I think we talked about this a little last yeah. time, but it, I think it's, it's, it's worth repeating is yeah. that to be aware 
of the various ways that we experience pleasure is a vital and important part of our lives, not only for uh, enjoyment, but for our health. Pleasure actually is a stimulus that um, makes the brain release yeah. all of the all of the called the feel good chemicals. Mm. Um, we are one of the most over prescribed countries in the world, maybe the most when it comes to uh, uh, antidepressants. Uh, and we have we have uh, basically a whole drugstore in our bodies that is activated through pleasure. And uh, I, I, and yeah, then... I, do, I could probably do a chemical breakdown, but you know, that's we we have we have this capacity within us that we, we can we can do more for ourselves than a lot of people realize. Uh, and pleasure is a, a vital, important, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, stabilizing element for us. So as soon as, when we can drop out of hypervigilance and drop into feelings of trust and safety, then we start losing that hypervigilance, it falls away by itself. Yeah. It's, it, it's not something we can convince ourselves to, you know, let go of because we've, it's become a protective shell. Mm -hmm. Hypervigilance, mm -hmm. uh, trauma, you know, so, so many of us have been traumatized in some way and that, that trauma is something that lives in the body until we process through it and release it. Yeah. So that also keeps us uh, that inner trauma, the internalization of trauma is another thing that helps keep us in hypervigilance. Makes it hard to drop out. It's the part that says, ah, 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 ah. don't be too, don't, don't be too fast. You know, remember what happened. It's not safe. But we are, in fact, much safer here in our bodies than a lot of us realize. Mm -hmm. But we've had experiences that have taken us to a different conclusion. Yeah. So this one of the wonderful things about this work, about touch-based work, is it is a direct way to rewire the body. When we are touched, you know... Okay, here's 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 a kind of a nerdy piece. The brain and the skin are, are, are the what covers our body come from the same little cell clump when 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 a fetus is developing into yeah. a baby. So when you touch skin, you are literally touching the brain. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how you could feel and how the nerves and the whole nervous system work, the whole body works, how we're alive, how we're able to communicate and speak. You just got to yeah. stop and think it's amazing at some time. It's just, it is, it's amazing. It's, <laughs> I don't know how other way to it's say it. It's absolutely mind boggling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what actually happens, what a complex and miraculous process it is. And we have become, I think, especially in the last few years with COVID, more or less a touch averse society yeah. we weren't great before that but it was easier to hug your friends yeah you know and and most of us have like stopped shaking hands you know i'm like hey how you doing have my elbow you know um so we 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 stay apart from each other uh partly through trauma partly through shame i mean we're this is a little bit late in our podcast to start un unpacking shame but mm -hmm. so many people walk around with that that's probably worth a podcast all on its own absolutely and fear yeah and fear we're we're, we're afraid mm. around touch because touch has been stigmatized 
you know, and and it's true that touch can be used inappropriately. Mm-hmm. Absolutely true, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're wow. talking about informed touch given with complete heart and consent. It's a vital part of this process is consent. And consent isn't like, oh, yeah, okay, maybe. Consent is, hell yeah. Yeah. That's consent. So we, we proceed... Uh, we proceed slowly, we proceed with caution, we proceed with with um, consent, and we start rewiring ourselves and, and becoming more, and come back to this word, embodied, living in our bodies. Yeah. Living in our bodies, which are miraculous. And made for, as we started out, for pleasure. Yeah. Beautifully said. And at this point, we have to wrap it up. So on that note, I think it's a pretty good way to wrap it up. I hope so. I agree. So how can we reach out to you, to work with you, to talk to you, please? Well, you can email me. And my email address is really simple because it's my name, Barry Carl, B-A-R-R-Y-C-A-R-L all small case, no spaces at gmail.com. Awesome. Or you can text or call me at 917-863-1950. Or you can go to my page on Heal Me and drop me a line from there. Aw, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And pleasure speaking with you as always. And um, of course, reach out in the meantime, looking forward to the next time we speak about even some more great conversation and pleasure, boys and girls. Don't be afraid. Let's break down that barrier. And thanks to our friend here. He's helping us to do just that. And he can help you do the same. Reach out to him. Barry Carl, thank you. Have a great day. And to all of our listeners, stay tuned. More of the show is on the way. Thank you so much. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network.